So we were just talking about how we can use Python to work with data files like CSV files. Let's try it from an actual notebook. So I have here a notebook in front of me. And because I want to read the data into a pandas data frame, because when we're working with Python, data frames are very useful for data science, I'm going to need to import that pandas library again. You're going to get used to that line of code, I'm thinking. And let's say I have a nice CSV file containing airport information. I have the airport's name, city, and country. And you can actually see that I have that actual row is in my CSV file itself, as long with the names, cities, and country for a number of different airports. So I can simply use the read CSV command to read that data into a data frame and then display the contents of that data frame. So sure enough, you can see that the column names were read successfully from the file. You can see that index values were created, as Christopher was explaining. Panda data frames, you always have an index for each row. In this case, because there was none provided, it generated them for me. So everything looks great. But when we are writing Python code, we have to make sure that that code can handle different variations in the data file that we're loading. For example, I might have a record here where the row for Heathrow London has an extra comma in it. And that extra comma is going to mess up my code because it now thinks there's four values in that row instead of three. So by default, if I just try to read that file, it's actually going to crash. And it won't put any data at all inside my data frame. Well, um, I have a couple of options here. I can now go digging through that file, try to figure out where is the one row that's causing the error and try to fix it. And yes, there'll be some hints in the error messages to help me find which row has the problem. But um, one of the neat things about data science is sometimes it's OK if we've got a million rows. Maybe we can leave 12 of them out. Um, so maybe we just want to skip the bad rows. So in that case, we can use Python supports that as well. So what we can do is we can specify error bad lines equals false. And that simply means if you meet a row that you can't interpret, skip that row and continue. So if I run this one, you'll see it successfully loads the records. And that record from London for United Kingdom was simply skipped. So that record was not loaded. The other common situation you'll encounter when reading data files with your Python code is the, header, the file may not contain a row that tells you what the column headers are. So here, I have some data. But there's no row telling me what the column name should be. By default, if you pass this in, basically, Python and the pandas are going to get a little confused because they kind of assume you are passing in values for the column headers. So it reads the first row of data and thinks those are the column headers. So suddenly, I have a column header called Seattle Tacoma and a Seattle in USA. So I need to make sure I have a way of saying, no, no, no. The first row in the file is actually data. It's not headers. And that's why we have the option of specifying header equals none. So if I specify header equal none when I load the file, that's a way of saying there's no header row. And I simply want you to assign values to those column headers. And if I don't tell it what values to assign, it'll just give them a number value, column 0, column 1, column 2. Now, you might, though, have appreciated when Christopher was doing some queries against the data frame that it, sometimes it's nice to be able to specify the columns by name. It's easier for me to remember that city contains the city rather than column index 1 is the city. So you could also, even if the header values aren't specified in the file, you can specify by using the names parameter what column names you would like to use. So if I run this, you'll see it actually successfully said, oh, you don't have a header row. So here, specify a value of name, city, and country for my three columns. The other scenario you're most likely to run into when working with CSV files or data files in general is a missing value. In this case, I have a data file. And for one of my records, Schiffel in the Netherlands, there's no city specified. You just see comma, comma. Now, if you read that, the way Python pandas will display a missing value is it displays it as NAN, so not a number, if you will. So that indicates that there was no value found for that particular value inside the record. So you'll see that as well. Now, sometimes when you start really doing a lot of data science and you, you do a lot of cleaning of data, you'll, you'll see that when you look at data science courses. Once you finish cleaning the data, you might decide, hey, now that this data is all tidied up and cleaned, maybe I'd like to save a copy of it so the next time I'm working with it, I don't have to do as much cleansing and rework. So one of the other neat things we can do with pandas is we can actually write the contents back out to a CSV file as well. So if I have 
data in a data frame already, then I can simply say, hey, let's use two CSV and let's write that output to a data file. Now, one of the things that's a little interesting, if I was to open that file up, and I'll show it to you in a minute, is the index values will be written in as well. So if I don't want the index values, that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, to appear in the CSV file, then I want to specify when I write the file that I want index equals false. And that's a way of saying, please do not include the index values. So let's go take a look at the actual data files created so you can see the difference between using index equals false or not specifying index equals false. So here you can see, here's the file I created by default. You can see it added the index values from the data frame. And you can see when I did specify index equals false, that it simply added the row values itself without an index. So there you have it. You now have the ability to use your Python code to move data to and from CSV files and pandas data frames.